Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. I can barely hear myself. Amen. We're glad to see you in the house of the Lord today. God is good. Can you agree with that? Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Here we have uh, viruses, and we have crime, and we have pain, and we have sickness. How can we say God is good? But yet we can. Right. So throughout, throughout, whatever happens, whatever takes place, wherever we are, he is going to be with us and give right. us strength. Right. Yes. Praise the Lord. I'm glad for his love and mercy today. If you're, a, if you're a younger type person, younger than I am, you may go to your class. We're going to be getting into our Sunday school lesson. We are having Sunday school. Yes. Yes. Amen. You can go to your Sunday school classes. Praise the Lord. God bless you. This is a week of week of Thanksgiving. We have much to be thankful for. But I want to talk to you a little bit today about God's word. We've heard many times, you know, we when we think of God's word, we think of uh, of the scriptures. But the Bible makes it pretty clear that that in First John one and one. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. However, in the Old Testament, in the Old, in the Old Testament, the Word of God was different. Yes. Now, don't get, don't get excited when I say that, but uh, think, about what it, it, think about when we hear the Word of God mentioned in the Old Testament. Where do we see it mentioned? I'm going to read several scriptures to you here today. Think about what it, when it, in, in the Old Testament, when we hear the word, the words, the word of the Lord. In right. 2 Kings 6, 11, and the word of the Lord came to Solomon. Yes. Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Right. Isaiah, and then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Yes. Ezekiel, again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, and, I, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to read all, but every... Most of the scriptures in the Old Testament, the word of the Lord came and spoke. Now we know about from John 1 and 1 that the word of the Lord is God himself. The word of God is, it says, the word was God. The word was with God and the word was God. Right? Right. Amen. Although the, so basically the word of the Lord in the Old Testament, you have to realize it. There was no Bible in the Old Testament. Now there were, uh, you know, the Ten Commandments and all the things that were passed down from generation to generation. But those were primarily in Josiah read this, you know, read from the scriptures that were in the temple. But they 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 were primarily a single copy. Back in those days, they didn't have copiers. They couldn't email back and forth, etc., like that. And so the the the. Most of the people, when they heard the word of God, when they heard the word of the Lord, it was a voice, just a voice. Now, today we have the Bible. Now, although the word Bible is not in the, in the Bible, the term, the term books and scriptures and the Lord spake, the word of the Lord, the word of God is mentioned 3,808 times. Well, that's a lot. It took me a long time to count them. <laughs> the word the word Bible itself just simply means an authoritative source about some particular subject. I mean, you can go to the bookstore and buy the the Bird Watchers Bible. I've seen a, I've seen a copy of that. You can also get a you can also get a <laughs> Coin Collectors Bible. And they use the term Bible. When we use the term Holy Bible, all it means is the authoritative source yes. about all that is holy. Yes. 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 It's the authoritative source of God. Yes, it is. It is the voice of God. So what the Bible is, what the Bible is, is, you know, we talk about Jesus as God manifest in the flesh. What the Bible is, is God manifested in printed form. If you want to get close to God, get close to your Bible. Yes, yes. Get yes. close to your Bible. Amen. Because in it, we have that bread of life. Right. That we need in order to sustain ourselves. Yes. And we know that the Bible itself, it was written by men. That's true. But it says in 1 Peter 1 21, for the prophecy came not in old time right. by the will of the man, but holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Yes. The Holy Bible is God's word in, in printed form. 
So to be close to God, we have to stay close to this word right here. Yes. The word of God. Even the apostles, even the apostles realized when they were writing those letters to the churches, they realized that they were writing scripture. That today we would accept it as, Christ, as scripture, as a word of God. In 1 Thessalonians 2.13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the words of men, not as the words of men, but as it, as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectively worketh also in you that believe. Amen. They realized when they were writing those letters, that those letters would be somehow preserved right. as the word of God. Uh, yeah. That's the reason we read them today, as if they were written yesterday, because they apply to us. They apply to us. First Peter 3, 3 and 3, the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. The question I have is, when we read the Word of God, or when we hear the Word of God, what do we feel? Do we feel condemnation? In Romans 3, 23, it tells us, all have sinned and come short of the, glo of the glory of God. And many times, if it's our first introduction to the Word of God, if God is speaking to you or speaking to me, Many times the first thing we hear is condemnation. Now, not, not a, can I say it this way, not a damning condemn, condemnation, but a real, a, a, it, it is, the word makes clear to us that we are not where we should be with him. Amen. The next thing we hear is uh, we feel sometimes after we read or hear the word of God, once we hear that condemnation, if we feel that if, you've ever, if, if you have the Holy Ghost somewhere in the past, you felt this way. You felt something is not right. Yeah. I am condemned because I know I'm not where I should be with God. Yes. When See, we first made our first step toward God, yeah. we felt that condemnation. But the next thing we felt after that condemnation was an invitation. Yes. A Bible he tells us, yes. Come unto me, all ye that labor right. and are heavy laden, yes. and I will Amen. give you rest. Yes. And if we respond to that invitation, then what we experience, as we know, is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, or basically, just making a simple word, salvation. Yes. We are saved. In John 5, 24, Very, very, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath. And everlasting life. Ah, yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Everlasting life. yes. But that the thing is, our walk with God doesn't stop there. Once we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we listen for instruction from Him, from the Word of God. The Word of God gives us instruction. In Psalms 119, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Yes. That I might not sin. Oh, yes. 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 We listen. That's the reason we hear the Word of God through the ministry, through reading scripture. We read that we hear that it, we hear we read and hear the instruction how to stay faithful yes. to him. Yes. Amen. Amen. The trouble is I say trouble, that's not the proper word. Once we come to the once we receive the salvation, receive the Holy Ghost, the trouble is is there are hindrances to our walk with God. We hear that we remember the parable of the sower. As that word is distributed, as that seed is distributed, sometimes it's, it's, it is distributed into thorny thorny ground that's not fruitful. Sometimes that's the way our lives are. We are so entangled uh -huh. with life. Come on. With the problems. With right. all the stuff right. that goes with living. Oh, yes. Somehow that spirit that we have received from God gets choked out. Uh -huh. And it, it dies away. There is a consequence however if we don't listen and we don't respond to the word of God. In Proverbs 1.24 because I have called, I'm going to skip part of it, because I have called and you have refused. Verse 26, I will laugh at your calamity uh -huh. and I will mock when your fear comes. Right. There is a consequence to yes. not responding to the word of God. Right. Yes. There is a consequence. Yeah. However, if we follow the word of God, if we receive his spirit, if we receive the Holy Ghost, 
He tells us in Romans 8, 1, there is now, therefore, no condemnation. No condemnation. That which we, we, we began with condemnation, but now there is none. Right. Because we have responded to him. Yes. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes, amen. Amen. See, when I was when I was overseas, when I was when I was overseas in, in the military, <coughs> Shirley, our sister, Sister Downing, sorry. Sister Downing and I were, had not been married very long, and uh, I missed her. I'm sorry, I missed her. I did, I really did. Absolutely. And, uh, but you know, back, those, those were the days, this is back in the 60s, there was no texting, there was no, there was hardly a telephone. I mean, you could call somebody, but remember back in the old days, you dial zero, operator, I need to call, you know, and stuff yeah. like this. Yeah. Took, and, and it was expensive. Yeah. And the only way to communicate with someone was what we call snail mail nowadays. And it really was snail mail back then, because right. it, was, it was air mail across, you know, it was a, that was a long letter from the United States to Germany. And, uh, you know, so, and, and I, it, I, it was the first time we'd ever been separated you know, for I don't know how long, and uh, I missed her. But I look forward to the letters. I look forward to the letters. And once I once I got her letters, and I would open that thing up and begin to read it. To me, she was there. Yes, I'll tell you how. <laughs> I mean, I know this is weird, but I would smell the letters and see quick. I have I have got, I have bought her Chanel number no. five for sixty years. <laughs> And even before we before we ever started dating, uh, it was just somehow Chanel number no. five would just he just hit the magic slip and And so, I, I, but I would read her letters, and as I read those letters, and as I read those letters, it was as it was as if she was in the room speaking to me, and I felt a closeness to her that I didn't feel otherwise when I was busy in my job, you know. We're busy, busy, busy. I didn't really think about how much I missed my wife or how much I was lonely and things like this. But when I opened up that letter and began to read, I wonder, when we read the Bible, do we get a twinge and think, I wonder what it's going to be like yes. when, when I do meet him face to face? Yes. Right? You know, I'm in, and, and do you, does your loneliness grow for the coming of the Lord as you begin to read the scriptures and he begins to speak to you and tell you that all these things that he has prepared for us and how he loves us and how he protects us and how he wishes to be with us. He is with yes. us. But he, we, someday we'll really be with him. That's what the power of the Bible can be if you relate to the Bible and realize it is it is God Himself. It right. is the Word of God. It is a direct channel yes. to His thoughts. Yes. A direct channel yes. to His to His feelings about you. The, the, the power of the Word, if you love the Word, if you love the Word, you love God. Amen. If you love God, you want to be around the Word. You want to yes. feel you want to feel you want to feel the Word, not just read right. it. There's people who can do, you know, the, the interesting thing is there's people who have read the scriptures. But they haven't read it, realizing what it really is. Amen. Right. It's just right. it's just a book. Right. It's just a book. They just read the book, yeah. and that's it. and that's all it is. Right. But if you have that relationship with that's God it. Himself, that is, yes. and yes. you realize that the Bible is a source, yes. a connection to God, then the Bible becomes becomes alive. Right. It becomes alive. There was a there was a song that was written. Dottie Rambo, if you remember her, she was a, a gospel singer back in the 70s and 80s and even 90s. And uh, she wrote a song in 78 called Love Letters. And what it is, is a, is a song about someone who rediscovers the scriptures. And he described this person, the sing, the, the, this, this song describes the Bible as love letters. Because they, the Bible is, if you, if you were to summarize the, the Bible in just a few short words, right. the Bible is a love letter between him yes. and his future bride. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. 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 
Describing to her how he loves her. Yes. Describing to her how how he expects her to be a chaste bride. Yes. Yes. How he expects her to be ready for him. I would like to, I'd like to sing this song for you. And just, uh, it, it is a beautiful song about someone who rediscovered, rediscovers what the scriptures really mean. Go ahead. Going through memories and treasures today, found your love letters that were hidden away. There was tender emotion with the stroke of your pen. I opened the letters and read it again. Then I counted the gifts you had given to me. You never stopped giving with no word from me. They were wrapped in silk ribbon with the words marked in red. I turned to the pages and here's what I wonder I love you with the love I have loved you. I'd like to claim you, name you. Yes. I only yes. remember I love you with the love I Thursday, a week ago, we lost a, 
my, our, our brother-in-law, Shirley and I lost a brother-in-law, her, sister, her sister's husband. And um, Shirley has three sisters and two brothers. I have three sisters. We all have spouses. And Don was the first one to go. He is the first one to, to pass away. We've all lost our parents. And now we're seeing the children. I know you. I don't look like a child to you, but you know we see this new generation. Mm -hmm. yeah, time is catching up. Yeah, time is catching up with us. And you know he is. We we were discussing that he is. He's just the first. We know it's all going to happen to all of us. The Bible tells us it's appointed to man who wants to die, and after that, the judgment. Right. To take just a little bit about Don, I don't want to give you a whole biography, but. Don was a Vietnam veteran, wounded in Vietnam, and uh, uh, a great guy, big strapping fellow, taller than I was, than I am. And uh, when we walked in, we got the news early last Thursday morning, about five o'clock, and we rushed over to the house, and he had just he had just passed away. I looked at Don when I walked in, you know, passed away. You know, six foot one, 185, 190 pounds, down to one, down to 120, 125, something like this. Wow. A shell of what he once was. Don, and it, it, what, this is not funny, but it's some, his name is Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> his name is his name is Trump. <laughs> there is an S on his Trumps, not just one, but Trumps. But anyway. He's heard that about that the last eight, four years, I tell you. But anyway, you know, I walked into the room and he was, you know, we were all there. And I looked at Don and the weirdest song popped into my mind. Back in the 60s and 70s, there was a pop singer named Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee sung a song, Is That All There Is? Yes. Is That All There Is? And it was a song about life. Living, having living through life, coming to the end of life and thinking, is that all there is? Is that all there is? And I was looking at Don and thinking, is that really, I mean, he is, he's had his life, but here he is, emaciated, you know, terrible to look at. Is this our end? Is this the way it's going to be? And the song goes, is that all there is? Is that all there is? If that's all there is, my friend, then let's keep dancing. Let's drink, drink out, break out the booze, and have a ball. If that's all there is. The sad part, most of the world feels that way. Right. Amen. This is all there is. Yes. Uh, and, and even those who are in a church somewhere come on. don't really believe. You know, I had, a, I had a funeral director tell me one time, I have never buried anybody going to hell. That's the truth. They're always going to a better place. That's right. No matter what their life was, yeah. they're yeah. going to a better place. Yeah. But the Bible tells us that if you believe, there's an action required with belief. That's it. And you can, you can say, I believe in God all day long, a right. hundred times, but if you don't act on that belief, not it's not really belief. Yes. It's not really belief. And there's a lot of people who say, well, he went to a better place. And they're, they're really in the back of their mind saying, he's in the ground. He's dead. And Peggy Lee in this song is, is reflected that attitude that if this is all there is, <clears throat> why bother? Let's just party. Let's just party. But, you know, when I, when I, when I, that song popped into my mind as I was looking at Don and thinking about it. But suddenly, a few minutes later, scriptures begin to pop into my mind. Come on. This is not all there is. That's right. That's right. Amen. This is not all there is. That's right. Amen. In my father's house are many yes. 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 If it were not so, I wouldn't have to hold you. I go to prepare a place for you. That's it. And if I go and prepare a place for you, yes. I will come again yes. and receive yes. you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Yes. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them 
that love him. Love him. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Oh, yes. Don may be in the ground today, but it is not the end. No. Really, what he has done is just he's made the first step. Right. The beginning heaven hasn't even started yet. Right. That was just kind of a prelim. Our life here is just a prelim, pre prelim, preliminary. Yes. Yes. So what's going to become that's in right. the future? That's right. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Yes. Don, whoever else is in the ground will be raised incorruptible. Right. And we who are alive shall be changed. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a yeah. shout. Right. Man. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That we which are alive and remain yes. shall be caught yes. 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 with yes. him, with them in the clouds. Yes. Meet the Lord in the air. Amen. And so we shall ever be Amen. with the Lord with him. Amen. I have to tell Peggy Lee if I start today. I have to tell her. Oh yes, there is more to it than yes. that. Yes. This is not all there is. Right. This life is not all there is. And personally, I'm thankful for that. That we have even more to look forward to. We can be, we can be blessed in this life. We can be cursed in this yes. life. You can be wealthy in this life. You can be poor in this life. But all, whatever you have, these possessions that we have in this life, it's going to be gone anyway. It's all going to fade away. What really counts is what you're stacking up, what you're, what you're depositing in that safe deposit box up in heaven. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread and let us be drawn to him and be happy and know that this is not all there is. Amen. This is not all there is. May God bless you today. Thank you, man.